This presentation examines the t-test for correlations. So here are our null and alternate hypotheses. H naught rho equals zero versus H A rho does not equal zero. Recall that rho is a parameter. And that is the correlation we would get if we had the entire population of pairs of data. So we have H naught rho equals zero versus rho does not equal zero. That would be a two-tailed test. H naught rho equals zero versus rho is less than zero, a one-tailed test to the left. And H naught rho equals zero, rho is greater than zero, a one-tailed test to the right. Our test statistic t is going to be r divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared over n minus 2. And our degrees of freedom are n minus 2. So let's take a look at an example. Is there a significant correlation between homework grade and final exam grade? So we're asking for a significant correlation. That means it could be positive or negative, which makes this a two-tailed test. And we certainly would expect it to be positive, but we will do this as a two-tailed test. Rho is our parameter, and we will go ahead and find our test. So here's some data. We have 41 students. We have their homework grade for a semester and their final exam grade for a semester. You will notice for the most part high scores, 93 on the homework, corresponds to a 95 on the final. Low scores, 64 on the homework, corresponds to a 53 on the final. So we would expect there to be some kind of a positive correlation here in general. We're going to ask Minitab for some help, asking core C-O-R-R, C1, C2. We get the correlation coefficient of 0.541, and you will notice the p-value here on C-O-R-R. When Minitab gives us the p-value for the core, it is a two-tailed test, so please keep that in mind. They will be using a slightly different strategy than I am. So we have our R of 0.541. We have our N of 41. We will use that to find our test statistic. So there's our formula. T is R divided by root 1 minus R squared over N minus 2. R, 0.541. 1 minus r squared, 1 minus 0.541 squared, divided by 41 minus 2. So I'll go to Excel to do the computation. We want to find out what t is. So I've got my formula there. t is going to equal r divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared, divided by n minus 2. And what do we get? We get 4.017. So our t value in this situation is 4.017. We recognize that is a fairly extreme t value that indicates to us the direction this is likely going to go. So again, our t is 4.017. Our degrees of freedom are n minus 2. That's a little different from earlier t's that we've used. Our n is 41, 41 minus 2 is 39. So our test statistic and our degrees of freedom are the two things we need to go ahead and find our p-value. It's a two-tailed test. Rho equals 0 versus rho doesn't equal 0. So we're going to find our area to the right of 4.017 and to the left of negative 4.017. So our p-value will give us these two areas. We're going to ask Minitab to give us the area to the left, since CDF always gives me the area to the left. CDF negative 4.017, a T with 39 degrees of freedom. And it gives me about 0001. So this small bit is 0001, and that small bit is 0001. And so our p-value will be about 0 0.0002. So we have a small p-value. So indeed, we are going to reject H0. And we can conclude that there is a significant correlation between homework score and final exam score. And at least in this case, the R that we had was a positive R. So we think that as the homework scores increase, maybe the final exam scores will increase. But again, we had done this as a two-tailed test. So all we're saying is a significant correlation between those two measures. OK, our next example is going to be, is there a significant negative correlation between horsepower of engines and fuel consumption as measured by miles per gallon? So we're looking for a significant negative correlation. So we believe as the horsepower goes up, the MPG should go down. H naught rho equals 0 versus HA rho is less than 0.
So if you had all the cars, all their horsepower, and all their MPGs, that's what the row would be. That would be the correlation for all cars. We just have a random sample. So here's some data I have. Horsepower is in the second column, and MPG is in the third column. And the data is um, obtained from the location on the bottom of the slide. You're welcome to take a look at that. It's a random sampling of numbers from that relatively large data set. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to go ahead and do a correlation. So we're going to say core, C-O-R-R, C1, C2. And you'll notice we get a correlation coefficient of negative 0.612. The p-value it's giving me here is a two-tailed p-value. I'm doing a one-tailed test. And again, the method I'm using is a little bit different than many tabs. Numbers should sort of be in the same area, but not exactly the same. So we're going to construct our test statistic. R over root 1 minus R squared over N minus 2. R negative 0.612 over the square root of 1 minus negative 0.612 squared over 17 minus 2. And I will go ahead and solve this using Excel. So we have negative 0.612 negative 0 0.612 and we have an n oops we have an n of 17 and we get that value so we have our test statistic now we need to find our p value we have a one tail test row is less than 0 t is negative 2.997 with 15 degrees of freedom so we need to find the amount of area to the left of negative 2.997. We ask many tabs CDF negative 2.997, subcommand T15, and our result is 0045. So the amount of area in that little piece is 0 0.0045. And that, of course, is going to be our p-value since it is a one-tailed test to the left. So we get a p-value of 0 0.0045. Now, how does that correspond to the p-value that Minitab gave us? When we did core C1, C2, Minitab gave us a p-value of 009. Notice that's twice 0.0045, and that is, in general, what's going to happen. The p-value that Minitab will give you will be a two-tailed p-value. In this situation, we're doing a one-tailed test, so our p-value is just 0 0.0045. Either way, the p-value is small, so we reject H0, and we conclude that there is significant negative correlation between horsepower and miles per gallon, as you would expect. A, an engine with more horsepower, one would think, would be also using more gasoline. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. Is there a significant correlation, we're not saying positive, we're not saying negative, between study time and the grade the student expects to get in a course? This data is taken from the research paper that is listed on the bottom of the slide. Most students would think that more studying would lead to higher grades. The fact of the matter is that is not what is shown in this data and several other similar studies. The correlation that was obtained from this is negative 0.19 with n of 140. So with 140 individuals measured, the correlation was negative 0.19. So as the number of hours of study went up, the grades actually went down. But that is a very small correlation. Let's round it to negative 0.2. If we square 0.2, we get 0.04, or basically 4% of the variation in grades can be talked about in terms of studying. That is almost insignificant. So yes, the correlation is negative 0.19. The correlation is not zero. We're going to test using this model whether it's a significant correlation, and then we'll talk about how to interpret the results. So we have our test statistic T is negative 2.27. Our degrees of freedom here are 138. Negative 2.27, this is going to be a two-tailed test, so I've got to go to the left of negative 2.27 and to the right of positive 2.27. You'll notice I've asked many tab to do CDF negative 2.27 T 138. It gives me 0.12 in the left tail and 0.12 in the right tail for a p-value of 0.024, which we would say usually means it's a small p-value. So we're going to say, since the p-value is small, we want to reject H0. And then we could say there is a statistically significant correlation between study time and expected grade. And we'll fix that typo. Uh, but note that it appears that it's negatively correlated. 
In other words, as study time goes up, it appears that the expected grade actually goes down with our negative correlation, our negative R. However, it is so small that it is difficult for us to say that it's something for us to be concerned about. The issue here, of course, is we did reject H0. We are saying there is a significant correlation, but since it's so small, is it of any practical use? And for that reason, we're going to look at some caveats. Statistical significance is not practical significance. One complaint about a lot of correlational studies, especially in educational research, is that if the sample size is large, you can get correlation to be significant, yet practically it's not terribly important. As we said here, we had a 4% of the variance, of the variation in the um, course grade can be explained by variation in the study time. So just because it's statistically significant does not mean it's practically significant. Another issue that we have here is this model requires that the data sets come from a bivariate normal population, which may not always be the case and it's relatively difficult for us to test. So if you're going to use correlations, that's fine to give you an idea about the strength of the relationship between two sets of data, between two variables. However, be careful in terms of using the t-test to determine whether or not it's significant. And again, just because it is significant doesn't mean that the results are practically significant. And that will conclude this presentation.